Hello and welcome friends. Welcome to another episode where I celebrate one year of activity on YouTube by presenting you all my collection. This time I will show a famous brand from Romania called Flaro. I am proud of this small firm from my country. It has an interesting history. It uh, produced fountain pen during uh, communist uh, times, but uh, also it uh, managed to stay alive after the revolution for a few years. Indeed, it has to modify its production, but uh, I can um, tell you for sure, this old firm is still in business, but nowadays, it um, produces um, plastics for uh, the industry sector. I'm not so sure about their uh, activity, but it is for sure that they uh, stopped producing office supplies and writing instruments. This firm is quite old. It is from Sibiu, Romania. It has its roots back in the 1930s, but uh, of course, after the 1950s, it was nationalized like many of the private-owned industries. In fact, all of them were nationalized by the communists. I don't know if you know, but um, they didn't allow private property in uh, the hands of individuals because they were considered exploiters of the working class. So all the private businesses, privately owned businesses in Romania was were nationalized and in the property of the communist regime, communist state. And um, these are all my collection of flower related products not in a particular order because they are quite similar. The years of production that you see on these decks are from the 1960s till 1970s, 1980s. And one example from uh, the 1990s after the revolution that um, changed the regime from communist to democratic regime. So guys, I will start, let's see, with uh, the... Um, parts that I have in my collection from Flaro. So I will start with this cap. This cap, it is from a Flaro student, which means in English the same as in Romanian, so student. It was a low entry level fountain pen, intended as the name implies for students. I have only the gorgeous, gorgeous looking cap. I like this color and I think it is quite a rare color. Maybe in time I will find also the body of this fountain pen. It is that saying that whoever owns the cap of a fountain pen is the owner of the fountain pen. I hope it uh, applies also in my case. So I will put this aside. I have here a body of a Flaro Scholar. It is a Flaro School fountain pen. Scholar means um, scholar boy also scholar, so sorry. And um, you might uh, see as a trend, all the names are uh, engraved, thermically engraved in the bodies or in the caps of the fountain pens. As you can see, it has this uh, integrated piston filling system. It is stuck. And I hope I will have the time to to make uh, all these parts into proper working fountain pens. I have also here a body for from a model called uh, Jupiter. And indeed, this is um, also a Romanian producer from the uh, town of Sibiu, M -A -K -O. so I'm sorry, this isn't a Flaro product but it's also a Romanian fountain pen. It has this cap here. As a characteristic, you see that all are from injected plastic, besides two models that I will show you next. This is a Flaro record. 
interesting filling mechanism you can see with this little pump and uh, the um, reservoir of ink also an ink window here as you can see i miss the uh, nib and the whole uh, feed section i have here also a product that it is not from flaro acmc bean but it was also made in uh, the same town of Sibiu, also missing the nib and this i believe it is a piston filling mechanism yes you can see and the end of the piston was there it comes in this uh, great looking color this uh, beige or uh, light gray color and i have also one part here this is an old old fountain pen and you can see its name is favorite and it was also a piston filler similar to the german models torpedo german models of the 1950s i will leave this aside now let's move on to a flaro vega sm and this is the original box back then it um, cost uh, 32 lays and it has some written instructions here it opens like this this is cardboard and we have this fountain pen so flaro vega sm the cap uh, i'm sorry the cap is a pressure fit cap i thought it unscrews but no it is a pressure fit cap it has this uh, nib and we can unscrew the barrel and we can see this integrated piston filling uh sorry uh, ink cartridge like a piston filler uh, ink converter like a piston filler it is working but it is a um, part of the body of the fountain pen so it can't be removed this is a characteristics of uh, all the Romanian fountain pens produced during communist times and indeed a characteristic of uh, fountain pens made in um, socialist countries back then so this is the flower of Vega SM it's in original box and speaking about original boxes this is a flower Mercure but uh, this is only a ballpoint pen it was also produced in the uh, version of the fountain pen and I'm sorry guys I, I'm having difficulties opening it hmm yes it should open like this but now I'm having problem okay it opened so it has this shape you can hold it in your desk and these are the written instructions of the fountain pen and this is a ballpoint pen the same engraved thermically engraved flaro mercur sm and it operates by pushing this uh, button so this is another box this cost back then 36 lays okay and see i will put this aside now I will show you some uh, celluloid models. You might recognize them. They uh, are similar to the celluloid patterns and colors of the Parkers from the 1940s. And I will start with the simple cap in this uh, pattern. Uh, I only have the cap. You can see the clip is um, moving, so it needs a little work. This is in a beautiful, beautiful matrix team, green team. And this is celluloid, this isn't plastic. It was made in the 1960s at CBU, at Flaro CBU, and it is gorgeous. I also have another fountain pen in this uh, light blue color. You can see that the trims are uh, affected, are corroded. Uh, in fact, they were simple uh, met metallic brass parts, and they were uh, only brushed to look like uh, silver ones let me see yes this model i will zoom on it 
has an interesting, interesting, interesting nib. So you must know that one of the mysteries surrounding Flaro Romanian producer is that at um, the beginning of its activity, we can see lots of fountain pens made in Romania, but fitted with nibs that were made in Eastern Germany back then. So either Flaro bought many, many parts from East Germany or they simply imported them from East Germany. We know that between communist countries in the 1960s, 70s, 50s, there were intense commercial trades. So maybe for these nibs, they received the tractors, I don't know, made in Romania. But definitely, judging from the logo, this is a nib made in Eastern Germany. This fountain pen opens like this. And we have another integrated piston filler. Unfortunately, this lacks one part from here. It definitely needs restoration, this model. And I also have another model which has the same um, characteristic as uh, that model. This interesting is fitted with a nib and you probably recognize that logo. It is a Degusa nib, so a famous, famous nib in the 1930s and a high qualitative nib. This isn't a um, gold nib, but just a gold plated nib but also a nib from Germany. Guys, speaking about nibs, I have another nib. Indeed, this is um, the inner part of a fountain pen like this. By the way, this is uh, the name of this is 61. And I'm trying to show you. So again, imprinted, I hope you can see Flaro. 61s maybe we can see on this other one i want to show you so flaro no sorry it's flaro 61c my mistake not s but c and now i want to show you the degusa nib iridium point and that logo i love i simply love those nibs and um, they they uh, write quite quite smooth so I always hunt for early Flaro products that were equipped with uh, German nibs. Next, I have quite similar fountain pens, a Flaro Uranus from the 1970s, a quite, quite elegant fountain pen, and I love its nib, I simply love it. It gives the feeling of dynamic, like a rocket. I love the fact that the feed is uh, hidden behind this part. And let me show you again this integrated piston filling mechanism. You can see how it operates. It's quite a simple one. But I don't like the fact that it is integrated in the body of the fountain pen and I can't remove it for easy cleaning. So it is what it is. Let me move on with Flaro 61S, so this is the 61S. You can see a plastic body, the cap on screws. We have an open nib. Let me show you what it is we have imprinted on it. So we have uh, the logo Flaro and Iridium. Okay, we move on now to the model Flaro Vega S. I've already shown you that model in uh, its original box. You can see another integrated um, ink converter. Here I have another Flaro Vega, but this is SM and quite similar you can see in unfortunate the trims are affected 
And I have here another Flaro Vega S. Quite, quite affected also. And I have um, Flaro 61F51. You can see. Let me show you the nib. So I have here uh, Flaro Iridium 51FK. And this ink converter. And now, guys, we reached almost the end of the video. But I left for last the best, best uh, fountain pen ever produced by Flaro, in my opinion. And it all started in the 1960s. But what you see here are products from the early 1970s. So what did uh, Flaro do? I think that uh, Flaro received a command, a high command from the Communist Party to produce a limited series of fountain pens and um, they were intended for high members of the Communist Party, for diplomats or as gifts to foreign dem uh, dignitaries that were visiting Communist Romania. This fountain pen is highly, highly inspired by the Mont Blanc diplomat 149 from the 1960s. If you put them side by side, you will notice that the diplomat has that rounded endings and this has those flat endings. And I'm sorry guys, I don't have a Mont Blanc Ward 49 in my collection yet, but I have a similar fountain pen made by the Chinese from Jin Hao with the same dimensions, exterior dimensions. And if we put them side by side, you can notice the different, different endings of the cap. But it is quite similar in uh, dimensions with this Jin Hao fountain pen. I am proud to present to you the only fountain pen made in Romania with a gold nib. And you can see Flaro Osmiu 14 karat Romania and 585. Even the back ebonite feed is highly inspired by the Mont Blanc of the 1960s. Not to mention the fact that it, it has the same ink windows as that model. And it is a piston filling mechanism. So guys, this is the rare fountain pen in my collection, I could say. It is believed that this version with the gold nib, which was called Flaro Titan Deluxe, was produced only in 1000 pieces. And uh, most of them um, are quite highly collected by uh, both collectors in Romania and those abroad that know and appreciate a truly rare, rare piece. I don't know what is the current value of this piece, but uh, I'm not surprised if this uh, would be sold some days for a thousand euros or even 1500 US dollars. Believe me, it is quite, quite a rare, rare, rare fountain pen. In comparison with this version, which is the deluxe version with the gold nib, I have here the plain, plain uh, Titans. And you can see the main difference between them is um, the trims, which, which on the simple version is in this uh, silver color. This is one of the, st the distinctions between them. And another important distinction is the fact that we have here a plain steel nib imprinted Flaro Osmio 65 MB. And MB, I think it stands from Mont Blanc. I'm not so sure, it's a factory imprint. 
you can see they all come in black black plastic but this i'm not so sure in this liking you can see it is an indigo so a very very dark blue and also in uh, the same the same um, big steel nib and guys these are prone to damage and i will show you one of them <laughs> unfortunately the piston filling mechanism is not as um, good as we have on uh, the mont blancs so this part here tends to break from the main uh, piston filling turning knob and it is a common problem from for these models but this luxury version has no problem and it is in the best working order so guys what you see on my desk are products of the romanian communist fountain pen industry in 1989 in december the end of december was the romanian revolution and after the 1990s all the communist industries went not all but the majority of the communist industries suffered a little bit from the passing from a centralized a planned economy to a free market and of course most of them ended up by the 2000s sold by scrap metal it was a great theft in my country but uh, not only in my country but in all the communist uh, blocks they sold uh, many many of my country resources for for nothing but it is what it is i can't complain what can i say flaro continued its uh, production but it had to adapt to the new trends of the market and you can see in this fountain pen released after the 1990s they had to adapt and they launched a quite plain looking fountain pen but in this attractive color a plastic fountain pen with a plain plain steel nib imprinted flaro with this grip section done in metal and most important look what an um, open market brought so they had to adapt in the sense that this part is removable in uh, the sense that you can uh, use also ink cartridges which appeared in the romanian market after the 1990s oh i think this has a little bit of uh, ink flow problems but a product made by flaro after 1990 you can uh, probably see how this firm uh, adapted to the new trends of the market but uh, it appears that w they weren't as competitive as other uh, fountain pens made um, cheap fountain pens or at affordable prices that were um, imported from germany or brought from china and uh, eventually they had to adapt their production to other needs of the market and um, they use these mo plastic molding machines for uh, producing industrial plastic parts from for other industries so guys uh, this was my short presentation of the flaro romanian brand that produce fountain pens you must know that uh, with those products uh, most of uh, the generation of students and scholars from the 1960s 70s 80s and uh, even in the early 90s they use flaro products you could choose between flaro products uh, fountain pens made in the soviet union and uh, of course the chinese fountain pens the famous copies of the parker 51 with aerometric systems so um in uh, this closed market you have to adapt with the flaro products i can't say that they were high quality products but uh, they were medium it depends on how it was your luck the control quality of the line of production was quite low so uh, you you could uh, receive a perfect lot with no flaws 
or you could receive receive uh, damage lots. So most of the fountain pens that were of this quality were intended for the export market. So the best lots were um, intended for the export market because the communist regime needed currency, needed um, uh, Deutsche Marks or uh, American dollars back then. So guys, I am quite proud of this firm, the Flala firm from uh, Sibiu. I'm quite proud to own a f the only fountain pen with a gold nib ever produced in Romania. And this is my only example from uh, five years of collection of collecting fountain pen. I saw only once this fountain pen and I grabbed it as fast as I could. This was my Flaro collection. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, episode. If you've enjoyed it, please uh, subscribe to my channel to help me in my YouTube journey and activity. I wish you to have a nice day wherever you are. We will see you again at the next episode. Till then, bye bye and take care of yourself.